All right. I was actually about to call it a day, but then I realized we're in perfect position to compute the Christoffel symbol on the sphere of radius r. So I switched from the curvature tensor to the Christoffel symbol, and it's it's once again going to be a lot of vectors rotating at a constant rate, so to speak. So the formula that we'll use is, of course, the definition of the Christoffel symbols. S gamma dotted with this derivative. And I'll just remind you that this, these quantities can no longer be interpreted as components of these four vectors with respect to the contravariant base, with respect to the covariant basis. So uh, go back to the lecture where I first introduced the Christoffel symbols for embedded surfaces and review that discussion there. Okay, so because we'll be dotting with the contravariant basis vector, uh, you need to realize that because this is what the contravariant metric tensor looks like, the contravariant basis vectors will essentially point in the same direction where their length will change. So instead of length r, it'll go to length r times 1 over r squared. So the length of the contravariant S1 is 1 over r. And similarly, the length of the contravariant vector S2 is 1 over r sine theta. So keep that in mind. So let's start with gamma, gamma 1, 1, I guess gamma, which has to do with, I think maybe we'll talk about it rather than, rather than writing things down, which has to do with the rate of change of this vector with respect to theta. So we'll figure it out here or here, but then we'll document our non-zero Christoffels, of which there will be few out of eight. There will be only a few non-zero Christoffel symbols. We'll document them here. So what is the vector S1? The vector S1 is a vector of length r that rotates uniformly and makes half a revolution in half of 2 pi. So the derivative will point in the direction normal to S1. So it'll be in this plane, in the plane of the change of S1, but in the direction normal to S1. So it will actually point directly inward. It will point directly inward. Its length will be actually related to the proper entry of the curvature tensor. But the important thing to realize is that this derivative has to do with S gamma dotted with d s1 d theta, that's s1. And this is orthogonal to the tangent plane, so all of these values are zero. Okay. Because this vector is orthogonal, is orthogonal to the tangent plane. So when dotted with either S1 or S2, the answer is zero. Okay, let's switch to gamma 1, 2, gamma, which of course will be the same as gamma 2, 1, by the symmetry that we've always mentioned but never actually derived. I'm, I intend to fill that gap at some point. So this will be S gamma 1 or 2, dotted with ds, so let's see, we can either do ds1 d5 or ds2 d theta, what would be easier? So ds2 d theta is how this changes, how this vector changes as we go down, so it keeps pointing in the same direction, but growing because sine of theta is growing. That seems like a difficult thing to visualize, so let's think about s1 changing as a function of phi. So that's the sort of thing we've dealt with before when we talked about the normal. So let's, let's take that perspective. So we'll talk about ds1, d5, d5. All right. I've never thought about it before, but it's, very, it's similar to the normal, so it can't be that much more difficult. So again, let's think of the vector s1, and let's think about it normal, its horizontal component, component and its vertical component. Let's see. Oh, there it is. I think I can erase this whole business dealing with the normal. 
can concentrate on the position vector. So its vertical component looks like this, and its horizontal component looks like this. All right, what's the length? So of course, this is angle theta. I've added it since the last video. This angle is theta. So the length of this component is r cosine theta. r cosine theta, that's right. And it's a vector of length r cosine theta that rotates around in this plane uniformly and makes a full revolution in two pi units. So that's where the derivative will come from. Okay. And the vertical component, of course, doesn't change. It always points down. Its length is always r sine theta. But that's not important because it's unchanging as a function of phi. So that component will be 0. So it's really the derivative of this component. And let's see. It'll point at this point straight inward because that derivative as this vector moves around the circle in the plane of the circle will have length, will have a derivative that points tangential to the circle. So it'll be orthogonal to S1 and to S with an upper one. And let's see. So its length is, might as well write it down because I'm forgetting, R cosine theta. And it points in the exact same direction as S2. So when we dot it with S2, it'll be cosine theta over sine theta. That's when dotted with S2, and when dotted with S1, it'll be zero because it's orthogonal to S1. So here's what we've concluded. That gamma, that we have a non-zero entry in gamma 2, 1, 2, and gamma 2, 2, 1, and it equals, according to my calculations, cotangent, cotangent theta. Okay, that's our first two non-zero entries of the Christoffel symbol. All right, let's see if we can get the one remaining combination, which is gamma 2, 2 gamma. And by the way, as exercise, as a very good exercise for visualization and dealing with these sorts of things, why don't you figure out the same values by considering ds2 d5, which looks totally different, but because of the symmetry, uh, would yield the same answer. And even though I keep promising to demonstrate the symmetry of the Christoffel symbol with respect to the lower indices, it's a one-second calculation, but it would be very great for you to think about why that's true. What is it about this expression? What is it about this expression that makes it symmetric with respect to alpha and beta, even though it looks completely unsymmetric with respect to alpha and beta in that point? Okay, so here we don't have a choice. It will be the dot product of S gamma with D S two D five. All right, D S two D five. S two, this won't be hard. Rotating uniformly, well, maybe it'll be a little hard. Hmm. Interesting. So S2 rotates uniformly in the plane of this circle right here, and its length is, might as well write it again, R sine theta. It makes a full revolution in 2 pi units, so the derivative will also have the length R sine theta, and it'll point in the plane of this circle in the, ortho in the direction orthogonal to the circle. There you go. And it'll be length r sine theta, r sine theta, r sine theta. And now we will really have to use our power of visualization. Well, it's orthogonal to S2, which tells us that gamma 2, 2, 2 is 0. Is that true? Yes, clearly. So it's only not orthogonal to this. So let's draw it here so they're on the same footing. So here that derivative would look like this. And its length is, look at this, perfect. R sine theta, 
Well, actually, that it means that it's this link. There we go. Isn't that perfect? R sine theta. All right, so this vector right here is ds2 d5. It's hard to believe that it's so perfect. And now we have to find the dot product of this vector and s, but with an upper index. So let's see. It'll be the length of s1, which is 1 over r, times the length of this, times the cosine of the angle between them. And the angle between them is, of course, pi minus theta. Pi minus theta. Pi minus theta. So the cosine of pi minus theta is minus cosine theta. So once again, it's something of length r times something of length, no, excuse me, it's something of length 1 over r, the vector of length 1 over r, times the vector of length r sine theta, so we have sine theta, times the cosine of the yes angle with a minus sign, so minus cosine theta. So, gamma 1, 2, 2 is minus sine theta, cosine theta. So it appears that none of these Christoffel symbols depend on R. I hope that's correct. Let's just review why this one was cotangent theta, just to make sure it doesn't depend on R. I find it a little bit surprising. I don't remember what the values are. I typically look them up when I need them, but let's just make sure. So it was this was of length R. So this component was r sine theta, and then we multiply it, yep, r's cancel. Okay, doesn't seem to be dependent on r. So there you go, we have now, we now have our Christoffel symbols for the sphere of radius r referred to the standard spherical angles theta and phi. Great, thank you very much, see you next time.